Former President Obama has been campaigning here, and no wonder. Four heatedly contested House races in Orange County could determine control of Congress and even the fate of the Trump presidency. Who are these candidates? What are their issues? And who's pouring millions into their campaigns? We'll hear from National GOP Committeeman Sean Steele and Chapman University Professor Michael Moodian. They're next on Inside OC. Inside OC is brought to you by each new community Five Point brings to life represents a promise delivered. Great neighborhoods are more than just places to live, they are places to connect. Five Point is a proud sponsor of public television and community programming. Chapman University is a proud sponsor of Inside OC and community programming. Cool. Well, hi, I'm Rick Reef, and I'm talking with Sean Steele and Mike Moody. And gentlemen, thank you for coming on. We have a lot to cover because we've got four races in particular we want to talk about in Orange County congressional races that are part of this whole uh, national uh, uh, campaign that we've got. Uh, really, it's a national campaign for Congress. Uh, just to show how important Orange County is, President Obama recently here who knows he might come back again uh, I and, hope so. uh, and <laughs> I do I want him back <laughs> all right well and, and and you and you know you may get your wish but you know uh, uh, to that point Sean we've got changing demographics in Orange County the GOP uh, registration edge has been shrinking over the years Trump not popular generally speaking in California the Democrats smell blood. We've got a blue wave on our set, but that's totally coincidental. But let me ask you, I mean, you know, are you concerned that there is a bl blue wave that could sweep up Orange County? No, I'm very concerned. I've lived in Orange County uh, since the uh, uh, last 10 years. I uh, love Orange County, love the lifestyle in Orange County, uh, but this is a national election. Historically, when a, there's a new president, he always loses substantially, and usually the House of Representatives, in the first two years of his presidency. It happened with uh, Clinton, Obama, Bush, everybody uh, in the last 50 years. So that's a great historical trend. And at the same time, in order for Nancy Pelosi to become speaker, she has to win in California, and that's really through Orange County. I think Michael and I both agree with that. So there's four, there's four seats at, at risk. I'm more optimistic than, th th than some because uh, I'm spending a lot of my time and energy focused on these four races. Uh, but, uh, you know, Obama comes out here, he reminds Republicans of why he was so nauseous for eight years. And that's important because my side is still a wash in victory in 2016 and still a bit asleep at the wheel, so we need to stimulate them. Obama helps with that. When he showed up at the Anaheim Convention Center, you know how many people showed up to see him for free? And this was at, at 950 people. I personally hosted Ben Carson with over 10,000 people when he showed up okay. ready for president. Well, of course, I think, that, I think uh, didn't they say it was invitation only? Uh, but anyways, but, but, all right. They're, they're so, always invitation only, right, but only 950 showed up. Uh, I, I, I think you probably agree with some of what Sean said, but when it came to the 900, and, and Mike, I should say, thank you so much for coming on. Sure. And just for viewers that are saying, well, hey, we've got this, you know, Republican insider, and, and you know, you, you, you're you're, you're a political science professor, but the reason you're on is I reached out to the party. I reached out to the Democratic Party numerous times. They just seemed reluctant. They didn't want to do it. They didn't send anybody. At the last minute, I tried to get some other people. They were busy. So we don't have a true blue certified, card-carrying, you know, Democratic operative, but you will do your best to articulate the Democratic viewpoint. So on that sure. point with They'll Obama, only 900. Yeah. What is this? He only draws 900. Well, sure. I mean, Sean, let's get real here. The reason it was only 900 was because it was an invitation-only event for campaign volunteers. Remember when Obama spoke at the UCI commencement? That was at Angel Stadium. So it, it, it's, it's not a matter of, uh, of, of a low turnout for uh, Obama. It was, it was scheduled at the last minute. It, it was meant to be a small event. And regarding the uh, concern that we see in Orange County, you know, like you, I'm an Orange, Orange County resident. I've been here my entire life, going back to the mid-1970s. I never thought I would see this, where we would actually have, in deep red districts, 
uh, Democrats with a real shot at winning. If you look at Rohrbacher's district, even Mimi Walters' district, the, the nonpartisan Cook Political Report now considers that a toss-up. So this is from the polling that, uh, that, that, that I've done with Professor Fred Smoller. I think in many ways it's a reaction to a very unpopular president. We have changing demographics in the county, and this change is being driven by the young in the county, and it's being driven by our Latino electorate and our Asian American ele electorate. The Republican electorate in the county tends to be older, and that's not a growth demographic. Okay, let's, uh, just so viewers, again, get an idea of what's at stake here. Uh, here's, uh, this is, and by my, my source on this is real clear politics, and by their measure, uh, you need 219 seats to control the House of Representatives. The Republicans right now, uh, you know, are, uh, have more than that, they're in charge, but the way that uh, real clear uh, sees the race right now, there's two. 206 seats that are leaning or likely Democrat, 190 lean likely GOP. So that gives you 39 what they're calling toss-ups. I think most of the experts would say the number is somewhere in that ballpark. And here we see uh, in Orange County, here are the four races we're talking about. And uh, you can see the first three, Young Kim versus Gil Cisneros, Mimi Walters versus Katie Porter, Dana Rohrbacher versus Harley Ruta, all uh, rated toss-ups, and then, then Diane Harkey versus Mike Levin in South County and San Diego, uh, leaning Democrat. I've seen some others that have that race as a toss-up. I've seen some that have Mimi leaning Republican. But, you know, it, 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 just generally speaking, these are four very close races, and to have four races like that so concentrated, the rest are kind of scattered around various areas of the country. Um, so I, I, I ask you, Sean, we are, we've already seen seen a lot of money. Give us an idea of the magnitude of the money that is being spent on these four races. Well, keep in mind of the four seats, two of them are incumbents who have left, and so that leaves an open field, and historically that's great for a challenger, it's great for the Democrats. Uh, the money the DCCC put in, and I, I think we'll get agreement, at least $10 million in the primary that actually attacked other Democrats and uh, just to try to pre-select with the two top that we have, which I hope you agree is a nightmare for, for democracy, top, top two uh, politics where you don't even have a party to pick your own candidates. So the D uh, Also it, known as the open primary. That's, a uh, that, that, that's, that's another show, but anyway, all right. <laughs> as a, it turned out, it turned out the good old fashioned way we got a Republican against well, a Democrat. the right? DCCC had to use their money to try to pre-select uh, and pick their winners yeah. early on. Uh, cost well, then again, though, Scott Baugh and Dana Rohrbacher that, that uh, blew, blew a lot so of money, if too. if the so. Democrats put right. in $10 million, the Republicans must have put in half that amount. So it must have been for four, for four congressional seats, we're probably looking at in excess of $15, $15. million dollars in the primary, and the general is going to be a lot more than that. Yeah. Right. Uh, has, has there ever been spending like this before in Orange County uh, for congressional races. No, particularly not, not on the Democratic side. For decades, uh, oftentimes Democrats would run a very weak candidate against uh, a, a Republican incumbent who would coast to victory. Rohrbacher has won by double digits every single election since uh, he was initially elected. This is markedly different than what we've seen in, in years past. Okay, and speaking of what we are seeing, and, and it is interesting, uh, nor, I mean, Orange County's always popular among for fundraising, and oh, yeah. Republicans come in, and even many Democrats will come in to tap, if you will call, uh, what you might call the uh, Orange County ATM machine, and then they take that money and spend it in Ohio and Pennsylvania, places like that where there's a close race. Uh, now the money is being spent, a lot of it being raised here too, but the money being spent uh, right here in California, a lot of it in Orange County. So we're going to see a lot, I assume, uh, of TV ads in particular. And already, if you're on cable at all, you're seeing these ads. And let's just take a look. All, all these races have ads, but let's just look at uh, one of the races. This is the 45th District. It's Mimi Walters versus Katie Porter. And let's take a look. First, we're going to see a uh, Katie Porter ad and then a Mimi Walters ad. Let's just take a quick look okay. at it. Yes, sir. Mimi Walters voted to defund Planned Parenthood and ban a woman's right to choose. And Walters voted with Donald Trump 98% of the time. Then there's Katie Porter, consumer protection attorney, mother of three. I'll stand with Orange County women and families 100% of the time because every Californian deserves affordable health care. Join Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren 
Katie Porter for Congress. I'm Katie Porter, and I approve this message. Meet extreme Katie Porter. Porter has called radical Elizabeth Warren a mentor and promises to raise taxes if elected. Now she wants to represent us in Congress? We don't need Elizabeth Warren's extreme liberal agenda in Orange County. Fortunately, we have Mimi Walters, our proven champion, fighting for domestic violence victims, protecting our local firefighters, lowering our taxes, proven results. Mimi Walters for Congress. I'm Mimi Walters and I approve this message. Okay, so I thought some interesting things there. Um, most interesting, and this is where it, it's, I find this fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, in some of these other races, other parts of the country, candidates trying to make themselves to be somebody they're not. Here, it's kind of like Katie Porter says, I'm with Elizabeth Warren, and Mimi says she's with Elizabeth Warren. It's kind of like there's no issue, like, oh, no, no, I'm not going to vote for this or that. You know, it's kind of like I'm with Elizabeth Warren, and, you know, you shouldn't vote for her because she's for, with Elizabeth Warren. What do you, what do you make of that? Uh, of the four districts, that's probably the safest for Republicans. Elizabeth Warren is not a popular person in Orange County, certainly not in that neighborhood. I, I have to admire the Katie Porters, you know, as being honest about her left-wing ideology, although she did appoint the uh, the gas tax. She's the one of the only few Democrats. So there's a split among uh -huh. the Democrats. Uh, most Californians hate the, the gas tax because it doesn't go to roads for one thing, right. and it's, a, it's another tax against the working class. Yeah. But the uh, th that that that's a unique campaign. Uh, Mimi's uh, got a fantastic organization. Uh, she's 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 the high leader in the Republican caucus right now. So I think she, yeah. her race is pretty much off the table right now. Now I want the Democrats to spend a lot of money in that race because I, I I don't think it's a winning race for them. All right. Well, interesting now that the, the Democrats, and again, this is not this is not the Orange County Democratic Party calling the shots here. All right, this is the state and national Democrat. They're not stupid, and I just find it fascinating that they're putting they are putting money into that race. And you know, uh, Katie Porter. You know, I think the assumption again, though, that oh well, universal health care that's not a winning issue. She's talking about that. She's attacking Mimi for. Uh, approving the tax reform, which by and large around the country uh, seems to be a winning issue. But in California, some some people, especially in the home mortgage deduction, got hit on that, and Katie Porter's hitting her on that. Uh, what do you make? It, are these? It, it seems like the Democrats are doubling down on their issues. Right, and you know, going off of what Sean said, I do agree. That's a unique race. That is a unique district because it encompasses the college town of Irvine and, and UC Irvine, but then also the solid red areas when we start going a little bit farther south in Orange County. So it appears to me that what's happening is that you know Porter is appealing to a, a liberal base that exists, a progressive base that exists in, in the district. And I think that it's smart in that she is doing everything she can do to uh, affiliate uh, Mimi Walters with Donald Trump. I think she's really trying to appeal to the anti-Trump And let's vote. talk about that because there are some themes here that uh, you know uh, I, I want to get to and how they're going to play out. So let's take Trump first since you brought it up. Uh, do you see that as a positive or a, dem uh, a negative for Democrats in these races? Uh, uh, if, uh, if I were a Democrat running for office, I would do everything I could do to attach Trump to my opponent. Uh, if you look at the data uh, back in the, the, the UC Irvine uh, public opinion polls of Orange County in the 1990s, George W. Bush had an approval rating in the county among Republicans in the mid-90s. Uh, that's down among Republicans in Orange County to around 75 percent, which is a pretty stark drop-off. Take that, combine that with an extremely low approval rating among Democrats, you have a county that looks more like the country in terms of its approval for, uh, for, for President Trump. What do you think, Sean? Is that smart politics for the Democrats to, uh, to tag these uh, to, to, uh, candidates to, with Donald Trump? Only if it, be, uh, only if it shows uh, uh, you, you go after Trump the personality and not, not Trump the president. When the Democrats get into trouble and they start talking about impeachment, they start talking about sanctuary cities, and they start talking about Medicare for all illegal aliens. That's a real problem because it doesn't matter. Most independents are not going to buy that kind of sales talks. Now, Trump, 
uh, Republicans don't want to make this national campaign. It's got to be a local campaign. Dana's a surfer. Uh, Young's part of the emerging Asian uh, community in the 39th district. Diane Harkey's from the area, has been there forever. Mamie Walters raised five children. So it's uh, got to be a local issue if you're going to overcome kind of the national imprimatur. Democrats want to make it national, right. but fundamentally, okay, over, but, over time, right. voters are looking at the local policy. So, the, so, so really, though, the, the, uh, have you seen any, well, Dana has sort of embraced Trump, hasn't he? Uh, well, Dana's, or, Dana's embracing his district. He's got triplets, he, he surfs, he's active, he's not spending a lot of time talking about Trump. Okay, and the other, so that the it's interesting, the Democrat candidates do seem to be talking a lot about Trump. The Republicans aren't, but what I haven't heard, please mm -hmm. correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, you have any of these candidates, the Democratic candidates, uttered the word impeachment. Are they talking about impeachment? In, in the primaries, you heard a lot about that. Uh, we have something called trackers, uh, people that actually taped uh, every single comment, every single Democrat. Uh, so that was impeachment, getting rid of Trump, fighting, resisting Trump, was a talk in virtually all four of the primaries, including the candidates that ultimately won. So there's a lot of information on that, and it's something that the National Democrats are trying to bottle up, but you can't help it. You got Maxine Waters out there talking about it. You got too many Democrat leftists that are in Congress that are talking about that, and the number one objective, and the voters are gonna know this by November, the one thing the Democrat Congress will do for sure, their number one top priority is impeaching Donald okay. Trump. So, Americans don't like impeachment. Right, and when I talk about, Mike, the fate of the Trump presidency, I think there is a, uh, a, a, a broad uh, sense out there that should the Democrats take Again, control of the House of Representatives. We will, uh, we will be, uh, uh, you know, seeing a vote on on impeachment. Trump has said so, uh, in right? His and, and so, right. Uh, so, how do you, um, uh, you know, how are the Democrats playing this? Are they playing down the impeachment now? And I guess maybe they don't want to talk about it. But how do Republicans raise it? Because if you're a Republican, you raise it, then you're raising Trump again, right? So, I mean, how is that going to play out? Right. It's a good question. The Democrats are being cautious. In in these general election races regarding the idea of so, impeachment. Because uh, even though voters might not like Trump, they also don't like the idea of impeachment. And for, for races such as, as Harley Ruta versus Warbacher and Katie Porter versus Mimi Walters, they're gonna need a good percentage of independent voters as well. So they're gonna need a good percentage of, you know, perhaps moderates, individuals who may be fiscally conservative, but maybe a little more socially liberal. And uh, that is something I think that would be too radical that would scare too many people off. Uh, but, oh, behind the scenes, absolutely. I think that's that's at the top of everyone's mind in the party. I'm going to give this man a, an A for honesty <laughs> and obviously a clearly a good professor. No, okay. Oh. All right. Well, with that, <laughs> since I've got you guys agreeing, let's talk about something else now. So, so, so Trump, watch for it. Both sides kind of walking on eggshells right. on how they do it. Although the Democrats, pretty assertive, they don't mind running a picture of Donald Trump and right. the and the Republican right. candidate right. next to each other. Right. Get the repeal of the gas tax. Uh, just very quickly, Michael, what's that all about, and how do you think that might play into this election? I've seen a lot of these candidates for national office talking about their opposition to the gas tax. I believe, uh, I, I may be wrong, but even Dana Rohrabacher had, had brought that up. Uh, so this is an issue that you know many of the Republicans are trying to use. It's an unpopular tax. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, perhaps a winning issue for a lot of Republicans to bring up, even if they're not necessarily in, in state government. We've already had a state lawmaker from uh, Orange County recalled because of his uh, support, uh, his vote for, for the gas tax. Exactly. And so I think we're going to see a lot of money spent uh, on both sides in, in the, the time leading up to the election. But that is what, uh, in, in, in my view, what the Republicans see it as a winning issue to get behind because it's not popular. Uh, is it a winning issue for these congressional people? Uh, it's, th th there's so many, this is so delicious if you love politics. Uh, of of the of the five, four candidates, three three candidates are, are female for the Republicans, and the Democrats are three males. I mean, it's a completely reversal of normal. We have uh, in the in the 39th century, we have a Korean American immigrant running against a, a guy that won the lottery. Uh, that's a that's a that's a wonderful contrast. We have an ex Republican running against Dana Rohrabacher, who himself was sued, a deeply flawed person. Her, her, Ruta was sued by a woman because she was fired because she had cancer. And she was fired because she was too costly for the corporation. She sued him back and got $1.85 okay. million. So it's a delicious race with all these. See, many of these Democrats are untested. 
they have horrible backgrounds. Cisneros, yeah. uh, the, the candidate that's running against Young Kim, has got a sexual al harassment allegation at the last Democrat convention in February. There was a candidate, Melissa Fosley, who's a Democrat. Now, now, come on, now, Sean, no, you're, no, you're kind this, of unloading this, now. This, this is this, this is, is, this is right. truthful. But, okay. but the fact is, voters are, are, are becoming aware of this. They're becoming aware that the politics is, is quite local and that uh, the Republicans have a different right. kind of but I, crew look, of candidates. I would say in defense, Three defense women are running. For God's and, sakes, that's a pretty good demographic. Well, it, but in defense of Gil Cisneros, I mean, he he's he he's needs a, a lot of defense. But he's a longtime resident there, grew up there, won the lottery, and has spent a lot so, of money. So you don't you don't believe grassroots like, stuff like I know, like, but you don't believe uh, you know, Melissa Fosley. Like, she's oh, no, a bona fide not, okay, Democrat. Yes, okay, all right. You, no, he, no, I, she she granted. asked him for sex for money. Uh, okay, I mean right. that, that that's kind of illegal and, and certainly not proper. All right, but and, the and I and I think well, no, but I think the Republicans do. So I mean, you know, that'll that. That'll be out there. But anyways, you know, and again, to the ironies, though, I, I, and I just saw this yesterday on the tube, Dana Rohrbacher attacking Harley Ruda for being a businessman. Now, granted, he had this case. Uh, almost any businessman has had something, uh, some kind of lawsuit, well, something that was I'm going on. I'm a businessman. No. I've never been sued for firing oh, but, okay. a woman right. who had cancer well, right. no, because no, no, she was no, expensive. No, and, but, but here's the point. That's and terrible. I'm not trying to diminish the charge, but I find it ironic that you've got the Republican right. basically attacking a Democrat right. for doing for being a, a an evil business person. Her name, and, by the way, she has, a, she has a name. Her name is Leanne. Dan Spivak from 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 okay. Ohio, a company that he that he right. that he owned. And usually, it's the Democrat right. who attacks a Republican right. for being a businessman. Right. Here, you've right. got right. the uh, the Republican attacking a businessman. Well, and on the flip side, yeah. you've got the uh, you've got the Democrat accusing the Republican uh, Rohrbacher of being a communist. You know, yeah. which which usually and is again is the other way around. Uh, right. Lots of ironies. And you know, Sean, just to counter your point. This is actually a very strong slate of Democrats who are running for national office. Mike Levin, a good friend of mine, uh, has an excellent reputation, years as an attorney and, and working in, in government affairs. I think he's going to win that race against Harkey, who has her own baggage. Uh, Rohrbacher, I just will cite what Scott, brought, what Scott Baugh brought up, uh, which I think did a lot of damage to Rohrbacher during that primary. This is someone who's out of touch with voters. There are these uh, weird affiliations with Julian Assange and marijuana. Uh, he's made some... Uh, uh, terrible comments about selling homes to the LGBTQ community. It was so it was so awful that the uh, real estate chamber of commerce actually withdrew their endorsement of Rohrbacher. So I think the biggest liability uh, happens to be some of these incumbents uh, okay. that, that so, are on the Republican uh, side. Let, let's just stipulate because I, 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 I know we could throw the dirt back and forth here, you know, for the rest of the show. But but, but, but folks, well, there might be a folks, few facts oh, yeah. here oh, no, too. I, yes, yes, <laughs> and, and and it's fun, and I hate to be the killjoy here. Maybe the viewers want to hear more about that, but I. I I would like to ask just uh, quickly now because we're getting low on time some other issues immigration how much I have seen a couple of Republican ads saying tough on borders tough on immigration I haven't seen a lot from Democrats pushing back on that how is that issue going to play out uh, Rick and, and Sean there is still that that base that is a vocal strong base that votes in Orange County that has this tough view toward immigration but also we are in a county where roughly 30 percent of the residents are foreign born uh, and I think this is a, a topic that uh, you know Trump has turned into a very ugly political topic when we start talking yeah. about negative comments that he's made toward 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 Mexico uh, so I think that that's uh, that's something that will still be popular among you know a, a vocal a uh, traditional Republican base, but I, I see that in, in California, uh, it, it tends to be more of a winning issue if we tend to embrace diversity in, in, in our diverse communities. I, I, I gotta, I gotta correct the professor here. Uh, we Republicans, Americans love immigration. My wife's an immigrant and she's on the Board of Supervisors. Young Kim is an immigrant. She was in the Assembly. Uh, they're both Republicans. Ling Ling Chang is an immigrant. Uh, she just beat a Democrat uh, in, in North Orange County. Republicans love to have honest, legal, hardworking immigrants run for anything be part of the party. In fact, that's the new emerging uh, 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 growth for the party. The bottom line is illegal immigrants. Let's get that very clear, Mike. We're not talking okay, about so, legal so, right, illegal so. immigrants that are here by right. by jumping in line, by right. getting the benefits, by not paying their fair share, by actually cheating the system, by creating a new criminal underclass. Most okay. Orange Countyans so, don't so like is that. that. So it, 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 
is that going to be a big issue? Oh, of for course, the it's a care? huge issue. Okay, it's a huge uh, issue. It's real, not going away. Real quickly, how about health care? I've been fascinated at even Harley Ruda running yeah. against a Robrocker is making a point. He's for universal health care for I illegal mean, aliens but, too. And unbelievable. There's been this assumption. There's been this assumption that is a terrible issue, yeah. and it seems like the Democrats are saying yeah. we think we can win with that yeah. issue. Yeah. Uh, socialized medicine doesn't work anywhere in the world very well. Right. Doesn't work in Canada very well. Doesn't work in England very well. Yeah. And most people right. don't want okay. Obamacare has killed the Democrats okay. for years. And to that point, though, the Democrats seem to be saying we think the electorate likes uh, likes this uh, idea of Good luck. Of, of, right. You know, it shows you the, the evolving trend in Orange County, uh, where this is something we wouldn't have seen ten years ago, but the county's changing. Demographics are changing. Uh, okay, well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, we we did have a couple things we didn't get to, including tax cuts. So I'm tax for cuts him. and tax reform, and he how that may play out. Taxes. We'll do that in our in our open mic <laughs> segment right now. But uh, you were very good, and, and and Michael, you did a fine job of articulating the Democrat side of things. We know we know Sean could do the Republican side. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks again to my guests, Sean Steele and Michael Moody. And you can watch this show and past shows at pbsocal.org or rickreef.com. You can also catch our shows and our post-show open mic chatter coming right up on YouTube. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Inside OC. Each new community Five Point brings to life represents a promise delivered. Great neighborhoods are more than just places to live. They are places to connect. Five Point is a proud sponsor of public television and community programming. All your life, people talk about what's best for you. But to most people, it's just that. Talk. Unless you're with Memorial Care, a healthcare system devoted to one important thing. What's best for you?